I've only got about an hour, so I'm just gonna get set up and get started. As you can see, the waves are huge today. There's actually a lot of smoke in the atmosphere as well, uh, but gotta paint. So I'm gonna set up and get started, and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna be using my smaller easel here, tripod easel based on the Coulter design, which is artboxandpanel.com. But anyway, I made this one myself. So yeah, I got my folding box easel. This is 12 by 16 inch palette. Um, and let's see what I've got. I've got odorless mineral spirits and a brush washer. I'm gonna be using liquid as my medium. An assortment of brushes, but I think I'm gonna use this number 10 synthetic bright. I think I'm gonna use that quite a bit. Um, I'll do my sketching with probably a bristle brush and also do some scrubbing in with that as well. Uh, colors today will be titanium white, cadmium yellow medium, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, um, alizarin crimson, uh, this ultramarine, and then also some phthalo blue, and I've got dioxazine purple just in case. Uh, there's the scene I'm doing way out there. As you can see, there's a lot of smoke, so lots of atmosphere. Uh, but anyway, I'm just gonna get started. Alrighty, so here is what I got so far. And basically I'm just trying to look for an interesting pattern of light and dark. There's not a lot of color out there, obviously. Uh, it's kind of high, you know, high key. Uh, the values are all pretty high. So I, I'm, you know, so for composition, I'm just trying to look for an interesting pattern of rocks. Um, and I sort of like the radial direction of these waves here. I'm kind of exaggerating that, you know. Uh, just for compositional purposes.
Uh, I couldn't really tell what color the rocks are. I'm looking through the camera now and it looks like they're kind of blue. Um, but in real life, there's a lot of different colors and in fact some red. So I just mixed up kind of a dark reddish color to block in the rocks. And now I'm trying to figure out what color the sky is. Definitely warmer than the water. So I'm gonna go with maybe um, just a touch of yellow ochre in the sky. Uh, and just working quickly, you can see how super loose this is. Um, because this is a really quick study, I'm just practicing painting loosely. So I'm not gonna really try to get too fussy with this. Just kind of state the main idea here and leave it as is. Uh, yeah, I make, make I make YouTube videos. Oh, YouTube videos? Yeah, yeah. What's your name on YouTube? Uh, Chamberlain Paintings. Chamberlain Paintings? Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely follow. My bad, I could watch all day. <laughs> I just want to watch. Because I like painting too. Do you? Yeah. What kind of, uh, what do you do? Do you do uh, oil paint or watercolor or? Uh, I like watercolors. Yeah. Thanks for letting me watch. Oh yeah, anytime. Have a great day. Have a good one. All right, you too. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, it's less than an hour, which is what I wanted to do. Uh, I am noticing some things going on in here that I never would have done if I was painting slower. And I really actually kind of like all that. So I'm, I don't want to overwork it. Um, it'll be interesting to get it home. Sometimes, you know, the darks are uh, the darks are darker when they get inside. I tried to lighten them up and put some blue to create atmosphere. Um, but yeah, I'll bring it home and pop it in a frame and we'll talk about it. All right, so as I mentioned before, my plein air paintings are just exercises in uh, keeping things simple, uh, keeping the brushwork loose, and uh, making quick decisions and not getting bogged down in details and that sort of thing. 
Um, what I find is that the more I plein air paint, the looser my studio work is. It sort of helps me, um, you know, edit and simplify. And uh, I think it just makes me a better painter overall. And I've talked about that before. So here's some of the ideas as far as if you want to paint quick and keep it loose. Uh, these are some things I'll share with you. I wrote them down. Um, number one, a time limit is good. So this was a 12 by 16. Um, an hour for 12 by 16, you're gonna move pretty quickly. Um, so that is number one. Set a time limit. Maybe go out and do like an 11 by 14 or 12 by 16 in, you know, in an hour and really stick to it. Uh, the next thing is your panel size. I would say go no smaller than like an 11 by 14, 12 by 16 is better. That's a, a you know a fairly large canvas, so you can scrub in, you can get spontaneity into the brushwork, um, and you can use bigger brushes that hold more paint. I find that actually, if I were to do this on a smaller panel, it would have taken me longer. I would have been fussing around with a lot of little shapes. So uh, you want to keep it loose. Paint a little bit bigger. Uh, so yeah, like I'd say 11 by 14 minimum. 12 by 16 is better on up. Uh, let's see, brushes. Again, I was using big brushes for the scrub in. I used a natural bristle, probably it was like a number eight, only because I didn't have a number 10. Uh, but the eight worked fine. Um, so that was the brushes I used. Medium, that really helps to apply the paint quickly. So I've used liquid when I paint outdoors. Uh, and I will sometimes, like I'll thin the paint with liquid, but I'll also add a little, odor, a little bit of odorless mineral spirits as well, uh, especially um, during the sketch and the initial scrub in. Uh, and then what else? Um, the last thing I'll say is having a clear compositional idea. So in the case of this painting, there wasn't a lot of color to work with. There wasn't a lot of light and shadow to work with. I mean, I guess there was technically because the rocks were kind of in shadow. Um, but I basically designed this painting around light and dark. That was it. So the, the rocks were dark and then the sky and the water were light. It was that simple. So I was just looking for a simple idea. And it, it seems to be like for me, it seems that the simplest ideas are the ones that you can just knock out quickly. So keep it simple um, and have a clear idea compositionally what you're going to do because then you can really approach it quickly. Like you may have noticed my sketch was really fast. It was like under three minutes. Um, and then my block in was really quickly too. I didn't time it, but it was just, it was super fast. All right. So as you can see, this is pretty loose, but once you put it into a frame, I, I feel like it makes the painting look more complete. So when I'm trying to decide, you know, whether or not to tighten things up or clean things up, I usually will just set it into a frame to, uh, before I make those decisions. Uh, let's see. So I do like a lot of this activity in here, this brushwork. I also like these waves and how this is, you know, this one's lightly suggested. Um, yeah, I think all of that really works. There is a bit of atmosphere here, so the, the rocks do seem to be receding off into the distance. And I do like the pattern of the rocks. One thing I'll talk about is the sky. So I was having trouble uh, kind of figuring out the color of the sky. And it seemed to be warm, like there were patches of like yellowish color glowing through. Um, but then once I put the yellow ochre on, you may have noticed I just scrubbed it out. I just took a paper towel and wiped it all down. The panel was still stained with the yellow ochre, um, but you know I came on top of it with white and ultramarine, and then just almost pure white over here, uh, which was sort of grayed down because the brush was dirty or whatever, but it worked out uh, because I did notice the sky got more, it got warmer as it went over to the south. So that's something I'll do often is I'll stain the panel like if I want to have like w bits of yellow in the sky, but I don't want to mix yellow and blue, which will make green, I will stain the panel with yellow and then come over with white and blue uh, and, the, and the paint won't mix because I've scrubbed as hard on the panel as possible to get as much of that yellow paint off the surface. And what remains is what's just stained into the pumice, which I put into my um, as you guys know, I put into my um, gesso. 
All right, so there are some areas that I would touch up. Um, this is a little weird here. I don't even know what that is. Um, these rocks seem okay in there. Uh, I kind of, I think the only thing I'd kind of clean up is this. And I'm not sure what I would do there. Um, I might just add like some light color right here uh, to eliminate that dark spot because yeah, it doesn't really look like a rock and it doesn't really look like a wave but if I added some white water right there um, that could work so that's a simple fix uh, but overall uh, like I said you know I actually really like what's going on in here there's areas of transparency like right here and in here as well which I really and also on the rocks I really like that, having areas of thick and thin. This paint is definitely thicker. This is reflecting some of the sky color on the top of the green water. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I will be getting out and doing more plein air paintings really soon. I do have a show coming up. It's a big solo show, like between 40 and 50 paintings at Studio Gallery in San Francisco, opening October 15th. So I'm still kind of I'm doing photographs and or like photographing the work and touch up signing things and stuff for probably another week uh, after which I'll be posting regular plein air videos again. Um, I have been posting regularly on Patreon, uh, not quite every day, but a lot of videos there. Just, you know, thoughts about art or pa the painting process and also some of the show prep and stuff like that. So if you're interested in checking out those videos there's a link to my patreon down below it also supports this channel the patreon support is what keeps me going making these videos uh so if you want to check that out link down below as usual thanks for hanging out guys uh, stay creative and i'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.